Have you ever watched someone carry out a dine test and wondered what they were doing and how they knew what that line of colorful fluid on their part meant? If so, stick around because today we're going to be talking about dine testing and how you can use it as a process indicator to make sure that you're cleaning your parts effectively. To understand the dyne test, we first need to understand the concept of surface energy and surface tension. Typically, we talk about surface energy when referring to a solid, like a piece of metal, and surface tension when referring to a liquid, like water. Think about a droplet of water on a flat piece of metal. Now, unless that metal was recently cleaned, most likely the water will form a bead on the surface. Why is that? Well, that droplet is made up of molecules that feel attractive forces to each other, similar to magnets. When the droplet comes into contact with the metal, all of those molecules can either stay bonded to each other, or they can break those bonds and form new bonds with the metal surface. In order to do that, the surface area of that droplet must get bigger, and the energy associated with that increase of surface area is quantified by the surface tension. Now that energy will be different depending on the surface to which the droplet is trying to wet. A freshly clean surface will interact differently than a contaminated one because the chemical bonds forming on that surface will be different. Although we can't see those bonds forming and breaking with our bare eyes, we can see it through the shape that that droplet takes on the surface. It can beat up and form a nice ball on the surface, or it can spread out or wet to the surface and form a thin sheet. A dyne test takes advantage of this phenomenon. A series of dyne fluids, which are essentially liquids with different surface tensions, are applied to a surface and their wetting behavior is observed. If the fluid beads up on the surface, then you know that the surface energy of the part is less than the surface tension of the fluid. Conversely, if the fluid wets out, then you know that the surface energy is higher than that of the fluid. In a dyne test, a swab is soaked with a low dyne fluid and dragged across the surface of the part being tested. Watch the line to see if it beads up or wets out. If it wets out, then you repeat the same test with the next dyne fluid in your kit until you reach a point where the fluid no longer wets out. The dyne value of that fluid will be close to the surface energy of your part. If you know what this value should be for a clean part, you can skip the whole lineup and just test the one fluid. If it wets out, you're clean. If not, the part's still dirty. Now this description is a slight oversimplification and there are some caveats. But to get around them, as long as you can correlate a specific dyne number to a clean part, you're probably okay. Alright, if you like that content, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also click that bell icon to be notified of future videos. Also, if you have any questions about dyne testing, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can send an email to askdradam at kaizen.com. Thanks again, and stay clean.